let us pray. So, Father, we come before you. And we, again, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. We pray that you will just give us knowledge and insight. Because just at faith value, when we look at these events that will take place in the tribulation, when we then look into your word, there is more... There's more depth to some of these things than we, we ever did know. And so, God, we pray that you will just um, especially appoint and anoint me afresh, you know, so that I'll be able to bring clarity to your word. And there is also um, anybody here who can also do that. So at the same time, as I lead that time of study, pray that you will bring to light that which you want us to know about these end time events. And as in particular, we look at the tribulation period. We pray, dear God, that you will use it as an opportunity to remind us of the things to come. That we can remind others to especially avoid that kind of wrath by accepting the love of Jesus Christ in his salvation. So bless the time now in your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. We have done an overview of the tribulation. And so we are about to dive into it, deep diving now. And we are going to try to be as chronological as possible. But at the same time, it doesn't always work that way. Because some things will be happening simultaneously. So at times, I would, depending on what I'm going to be talking about, I would just deal with one thing and then move on to the next thing. But as far as we can see, the tribulation period, seven years, has a beginning. And that, as was mentioned on, mentioned on Sunday night, um, that inauguration, that beginning, should start with the Antichrist making a peace treaty with Israel. So, Brother Mark, Pastor Evans, Reverend Mark, please go ahead. That's the right slide right there indeed. Right, so we're going we're gonna to begin looking at this peace treaty, and this marks the, the, the beginning of the tribulation period. Right, so the final week of seven years, this period describes the final week of years of the original 70 weeks of Daniel. All right? And most of you would have heard, if not all, about the 70 weeks in Daniel and the 70th week. The 70th week is the, is the, the tribulation. Uh, all right? Now, let me skip right to the bottom of that um, slide to see and, and clarify this. So the Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel and the duration is to be one week or seven years. So already, because I'm using the term, I want us to remember that when it says week, according to prophetic terms, the word week is equivalent to seven years. So seven years make one week. <laughs> oh, wow. Never thought of it that way. Yeah, seven, seven days also make one week. But in prophetic terms, seven years make one week. All right? So... 69 weeks have gone and there has been a long pause for the 70th week remember now the 70th week is the is, is tribulation and a week is seven years so the antichrist will establish a seven-year peace treaty with israel thereby confirming the covenant and making the beginning of the seven-year tribulation uh, sorry, not making, marking. Let me read that over again. The Antichrist will establish a seven-year peace treaty with Israel, thereby confirming the covenant and marking the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. When I, when I read this and looked through the scriptures, I said to myself, like what I said on Sunday night, I said, I wonder what it feels like to be fulfilling prophecy and not realize. Because, you know, I don't know. I say to myself, when I, it's like, I know that the Antichrist himself will not um, manifest his true colors at the beginning of this treaty. But nevertheless, it's like, for instance, if you are a Jew in particular, and you claim in quotations to know the Bible, and let's say the church is raptured, eh? Uh, you know, already when the church is raptured, you know that, all right, we're going to look out for certain things. And one of the things you look out for now is that, it doesn't matter who the person is. I know how nice the person is. Anybody who comes and says, okay, Israel, we're going to have an agreement here and a covenant. And they say, how long are we going to be? Seven years. It's supposed to be raising red flags. 
But it's interesting that some people, even in fulfilling prophecy, and even they are the ones that are fulfilling it, there are times that people still don't rec recognize that. All right? But they, 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 this will mark the beginning of the tribulation period. And of course, many things that are what we call coming, many things that are dramatic and drastic won't happen right away in the first year, three and a half years. However, some things will also happen. But we're not going to look at those tonight. We want to look at this peace treaty in its entirety. So, yes, Sister Christine, go ahead. I was just asking. <laughs> Mark and I are debating. Um, the, the, Pastor the, Mark to you. <laughs> Pastor Mark, right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the Jews, uh, they mostly use the Old Testament. So, is it that they would be aware of all these signs and things like all of them? To be able to decipher, uh, you said that have a clue that something is going to, something is going wrong. I, I'm glad that you said that. All right, let me let, let me see let me see if I know what you're saying <laughs> before before I answer anything. You're making a statement or asking a question first of all. All right, so ask it again or say it again, please. Let me make sure I'm commenting. Okay, so I'm asking because I know the Jews, they focus a lot on the Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? And these things are written in the New Testament. So I'm asking, would they be fully aware of all these signs that will be coming, even though they don't accept Christ as the Messiah? I'm glad you, that's exactly what I thought you said. So let me tell you, in regards to this 70th week, that this peace treaty issue, these things are written most in the Old Testament. The, 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 the other things like the sign, the seal, the trumpet, and so forth. Yeah, you will find that the New Testament bears a lot on that with Revelation and so forth. But this particular issue comes mostly from Old Testament, especially in Daniel. When we look at Daniel chapter 9, you're going to see him telling, the angel telling Daniel that um, um, this is something, a vision I'm going to give you for your people and your holy city. So Jews have no business being blinded. <laughs> in other words, it's very clear that this is to Israel. And it's in the Old Testament. All right? Interesting. All right. So, so, so let's go. Next slide. Next slide. So the content of the covenant is that the Antichrist will guarantee Israel's security for seven years so that they may carry out the temple sacrifices and offerings unhindered during those seven years. However, after three and a half years, the Antichrist will put a, put a stop to that which he guaranteed because he will break his covenant and become Israel's offender. Uh, Pastor Mark, in a moment, you can pop up Daniel 9 verse 27. But I, I had to, when I was studying this, I had to, I remembered what Deacon Colin Prout said about sacrifices and so forth so i did some extra biblical study you know outside of the bible and i researched what's happening with the jews right now in terms of what this sacrifice may look like because as far as i have researched the jews have not restarted or reinstituted animal sacrifices all right? So when it uses the word sacrifices and offerings, what they are currently doing is that they offer gifts, money, food offerings, and they observe a lot of, as you know, this still the religious, um, um, what's the word? Ceremonies. Yes, yes, and traditions. So, so that when it means, when it says that it's not animal sacrifices, in fact, I dug so deep that I checked on some of the Orthodox Jews, um, their website and so forth, and they have denied. They said that we do, we no longer offer or do animal sacrifices, but Orthodox Jews are wishing and hoping that it will, it will happen and they will return to it one day. But they don't do it, and they have not done it. Animal sacrifices, they have not done it since the temple was destroyed in 70 AD after the death of Jesus Christ, 70 AD. And the Roman Empire, the Roman army destroyed their temple, their major temple, of course, in Jerusalem, and destroyed their altar, burnt it to the ground. And when that happened, 
sac animal sacrifices ended and they never returned to it. So it is going to be interesting to see what this is going to look like in the upcoming, you know, tribulation period. But as far as what we call animal sacrifices, they don't do that anymore. But indeed, temple worship. And Brother Prout, it, it, that's when it hit me when you asked the question. I mean, it hit me after I was thinking it over in my head a few days later. That is another reason why you would you wonder, where's the church? The church is absent because and temple worship is being, of course, this is to the Jews, but you don't hear of any kind of what you call regular church service going on during those times. So that's why you wonder what temple worship is going to be like because it's not going to be the regular church service. So the, again, another reason why the church would have been absent and temple worship in the Jewish system would be established. All right? So, yes, Pastor Evans, go ahead. And it's a, uh, if you look at it, it's another indication that the church will not be here because, you know, most persons don't really think much about the Jews or Israel. But all of a sudden, everybody wants to protect Israel. What mm -hmm. happened why everybody wants to protect Israel? No, the church is gone. So if the church is gone, they're going to run to the next best thing, mm -hmm. which is a Jew because Jesus was a Jew. So they might say, all right, the church gone, can't help us now. So maybe the Jewish people them yep. can help us now. So that's just another indication that it's a church that will be missing that yeah. caused this great thing going on. And then everybody knows start to focus back on Israel. Yeah. Like, how we go get here help you out yeah because we all know this the jews are still the people of god we're the people of god and the children of god to the churches but we all know that god still has a as a covenant and a plan for the for israel and so they're still the people of god the chosen people of god and so indeed so i i believe that's also one of the reasons why the antichrist the devil the false prophet why these particular bad characters evil characters will be targeting um israel targeting jerusalem you know so let's we're going to look at this in another in another um what's the word i'm looking for another translation as well but the king james version says this is where we're getting all of that and he shall confirm let me look at my bible here so um i'm not uh, the glare pastor mark so i'm I'm going to read from my Bible. Um, you rest so you can follow on the screen. Daniel 9, 27. Um, and he shall confirm the covenant. Don't worry, we're going to read the context. But we're just backing some things up as we go along. We're going to read the conf context too, you know. But not right now. And he shall confirm the covenant with many. I'm just proving what the slide says in the first place. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Remember what I said one week is? Seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right? Now, let's let's look at some things mentioned in this verse and we're still going to pick it apart when we get to looking at the entire context too he says he shall confirm the covenant with many and we believe the many here is um the jews all right um in fact even though i think i i should just take you right there um go to verse 20. let's start at verse 20. let me just take you there since we're there in the context this is Daniel, starting at verse 20. And he says, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, all right? So he was focused on his people, Israel and himself, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of God, of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, which is the angel Gabriel, Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening oblation the word oblation means evening sacrifice is evening um sacrifice is evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i am now come forth to give thee skill 
and understanding. Daniel, I'm about to give you some wisdom and understanding. I'm about to unload um, some, 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 some vision, you know, futuristic things here. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. He says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. All right? This had not happened yet. Let me backtrack to clarify something. He says, 70 weeks are determined upon your people or thy people. 70 weeks is equivalent to 490 years. One week is seven years. So all you need to do is to multiply 70 by 7 and you get 490 years. Am I, am I, is my math okay so far? And I'm my best subject, you know, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> all right? So what the angel is saying, your, your, your nation, there are going to be some things that are going to be happening to them for 490 years. All right? So, I want to just say this now because you're not going to see much of that happening here. But history will prove it. It's history now, but it's going to be future then. 69 weeks. 7 minus 490 is 483. The 483 weeks, 483 years have gone. Only one week is left, which is seven years. But he's prophesying some things that will happen. And he says it's going to be a 490 um, years. But the seventh week, the 70th week has not happened yet. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. All right. So who is his people? And who, what, who, where's the holy city? All right. So we know say, it's Jerusalem alone I'm talking about. Sorry, it's, it's Israel. And Jerusalem in particular to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy know, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince the Prince shall be seven weeks all right in other words, some things are going to happen, and seven weeks represents um, how many? One week is seven years. That's how much? All right. And three score and two weeks. That's 62 weeks, right? So he's saying that some things are going to be happening for this period. And then when you get to this final week, something is going to happen. You're going to see that. Might, does not, might mean that not clearly, but it's, it's going to happen. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troubles, troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, after 62 weeks, how many years that? He said, well, leap. <laughs> shall Messiah be cut off? Who is Messiah? He's saying that some things are going to happen in the space of 490 years or 70 weeks. And some Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. That's one of the things that's coming out already if you didn't see it in verse 25. But then he says, Messiah shall be cut off. Who is Messiah again? So G Messiah shall come, which is Jesus, and Jesus shall, shall die. All right? So we're now saying, but after Jesus is dead, but he's not going to die for himself. He's going to die for the world. The world. So Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. He's going to die for the whole world. That's another way of saying Jesus will come, the Messiah. He's going to die for the whole world. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city. The prince could very well be. It's different. There, are, there are different views on who the prince is. I believe literally the prince is, 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 is Satan. Because he seems to be the one that is, um, what's the word? Orchestrating the evil acts based on how it says. And the prince, uh, the people of the prince sh that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Right? So what will be destroyed? The city and the sanctuary. Meaning Jerusalem and the Jerusalem temple. And the end thereof shall be with a flood 
and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Now the word flood based on my studies really doesn't mean water. It means that the army is going to come in like a flood. We will look at this. I have the slides for this, but let me just say it in advance since you're in the scriptures. He's telling them that the city will be destroyed, the temple will be destroyed, and it's going to be destroyed by the Roman army. All right? It's going to happen, he says. It's going to be destroyed by the Roman army. And they're going to overtake you like a flood. They're going to destroy the city, burn down the temple. All right? That's destruction. Not desolation. That's destruction. Not desolation. Desolation is going to be different now. Watch this. He says it's going to be destroyed. And he, no, it's going to be talking about the Antichrist. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He has accounted for the 69 weeks. And now he's saying that on the 70th week, something is going to happen, which has not happened yet. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In other words, after this, Antichrist comes and desolates the temple, he will be destroyed himself. Another version will prove that in a moment. Because don't worry, I know some of this is heavy. Trust me, it was heavy for me too. So I am going to almost repeat myself at times or say it in another way because i don't expect everybody to get this one time so don't worry i'm going to move on to explain what we just read so next slide pastor evans we're going to now talk about what is the abomination of desolation all right what is an abomination of desolation because he says it in daniel 9 verse 27 that there is going to be and overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate. All right? What is abomination of desolation? An abomination is something that causes disgust or hatred. And desolation is a state of complete emptiness or destruction. Jesus warned that something or someone that people detested would stand in the temple someday. That's Matthew 24. When that horror occurred, Residents of Judah, or Judea, sorry, should seek cover without delay. Other translations speak of the abomination that causes desolation, the sacrilegious object that causes des desecration, and the, that horrible thing. Next slide. The abomination of desolation appears throughout history and in the age to come. Now that, if you're not careful, will roll right over your head. Took me quite a while to put this together and understand it so let me say that again the abomination of desolation appears throughout history and in the age to come the antichrist figure who sets up an abomination in the place of worship has had a role throughout history in history this abomination was an idol but in the case of the end of days the Antichrist will set himself up as the idol for the people to worship. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you yet. We are unfolding. So next slide. Just wait and hold your horses and your questions until we get to where and hope it, it will make sense. If it doesn't make sense, then you can't ask your questions. Let's go through the slides here. Jesus spoke of a coming abomination of desolation. That's in Matthew 24 in the Olivet Discourse. As he referenced a future event. Jesus referenced Daniel in his words in the Olivet Discourse. The prophet Daniel mentioned the abomination of desolation approximately three places. Daniel 9 verse 27, which we just read, but now we're going to read it in another translation, another version, that it makes better sense to you. So what we read in Daniel 9 27, here's another version. He, the Antichrist, will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and offering. 
and the abomination of desolation will be an, on a wing of the temple, somewhere on the, uh, on the temple, until the decreed destruction is poured out on the desolator. So Daniel 9 verse 27 says, this person, we believe of course is the Antichrist, is going to form a covenant with many, and the many means Israel. All right, because you saw it in the, the earlier passage for one week, and one week is. And notice how accurate the Bible is. But in the middle of seven years, which is very accurate, you know, very accurate. No more or no less. In mid tribulation the antichrist will put a stop to sacrifice and offering and the abomination of desolation will be on a wing of the temple until the decreed destruction is poured out on the desolator in other words and then one day god will destroy the antichrist next let me read some more verses for you in a different version the other portions that daniel mentioned it says daniel 11 31 says forces shall be mustered by him the antichrist and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation daniel 12 verse 11 from the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up there will be 1290 days and guess how much that is in years thank you three and a half years all right the bible is very accurate about these things then next slide daniel's prophecies about the abomination of desolation seem to have at least a partial fulfillment in 167 bc before christ was born before christ took on flesh somebody desolated the temple now this is why i said just hold on a moment and i'll try to help you to put it together we read in daniel 9 verse 27 and before that these things are going to happen and then he says it's your the temple is going to be desolated the reason why i have to tell you this is that there are people who are saying that it's already done all right so listen to this carefully so in 167 BC, 167 BC, before Christ was born, a Greek ruler by the name of Antiochus IV desecrated the temple in Jerusalem. Antiochus called himself Epiphanes, which means illustrious one or God manifest. He set up an altar to Zeus over the altar of burnt offering and he sacrificed a pig on the altar you do know that jews don't really like pig eat pig all right good so definitely a uh, 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 various sacrileges happening here antiochus slaughtered a great number of the jews and sell and selling others into slavery that should be sold others into slavery sorry and he issued decrees forbidding circumcision and requiring jews to sacrifice the pagan gods and eat pig meat now here's the thing about that it definitely sounds like abomination or desolation you say but you know how we know say that means say, is how we know that daniel 9 27 refers to the antichrist and not to antiochus epiphanies let's keep working let's keep next slide what antiochus did certainly qualifies as an abomination but it was not a complete fulfillment of daniel's prophecy why Antiochus Epiphanes did not enter a covenant with Israel for seven years. In fact, no ruler from the outside has done that yet. Am I making sense? No ruler from the outside, no country leader, no other. There has not been any kind of peace treaty or covenant that has been signed with Israel for seven years. That's the demarcation that makes daniel 9 27 different and that means that something is different here right 
So Antiochus, Antiochus Epiphanes did not enter a covenant with Israel for seven years. And in Matthew 24, Jesus speaking some 200 years after Antiochus' evil actions spoke of Daniel's prophecy as having a future, a still future fulfillment. So in case you didn't understand that, let me just say this again. Some people think that Daniel 9.27 referred to Antiochus Epiphanes, who did abomination to Israel, to Jerusalem temple. But that happened before Christ came. And after Christ came in the flesh, he said, you know what? Quote, Brother Mark, Pastor Mark, just pop up. I want to make sure we quote Christ. Matthew 24 and verse... Um, what's it? I think it's a verse, what, 2021? 20, I want to make sure you see the verse yourself. Matthew 24. Sorry, verse 15. I had the whole context here. Matthew 24, verse 15. When you, this is Jesus now. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, you know, Whoso read it, let him understand. In other words, there were people, this, remember, Antiochus Epiphanes did desolate the temple. It happened before Jesus took on flesh. But Jesus with flesh says, listen, that's not what I'm talking about. And he refers to Daniel and his other words. He's saying, if you don't understand, read and understand. It, the abomination of desolation has not occurred yet. It may resemble what attack Antiochus Epiphany, Ep, 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 what Antiochus has done may resemble, but it's not a complete fulfillment. People can call it a partial fulfillment, and that's fear. But the truth is that it's not the event Jesus is referring to, because Jesus is still referring to it as something to come. He says, remember what Daniel said? He says, when you see the abomination of desolation coming, in fact, Pastor Mark, let's keep going down there. Next, verse 16. Then let them which be in where? where? Where is Jerusalem? It's in Judea. Is what I'm saying? Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. In other words, when you see the Antichrist desolating the temple in Jerusalem, which is in Judea, he says, times are going to be rough. Keep going, pastor. Let him which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house. And he's talking to Jerusalem. Because remember him called out Judea name. Judea and Jerusalem. Alright. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Next verse. And woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. Next verse. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And we'll stop at verse 21. Next verse. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. Now, that's why I told you to just wait and listen me out. We're connecting the dots here. We're connecting the dots here to realize that what was said in Daniel 9 verse 27 has not happened yet. Because remember what Jesus was referring to in Matthew 24. Where the three four, is a threefold question. Tell us when will the temple be destroyed. Tell us what will be the sign of your coming. Number two and number three. What will be the sign of the end of the world. So he's answering all of these things to come. When Antiochus did what he did, it gone already. And he referenced Daniel to say that, listen, what Daniel mentioned has not happened yet. Is there anybody confused or anybody needs clarification or just simply wanted to comment or ask a question just to make sure? Because I know it's deep stuff. Yes, Brother Proud. Yes, and it, it ties in completely with, with what you said. Although it's tribulation good, it's the final three and a half years that they talk as great tribulation, which is when this would happen. And that is what yeah. Christ said. Yeah. There shall be great tribulation. Yeah. And that's yeah. the final part. The, yes, the, the, the last, last part. The last so, three and a half and years. I'm glad you realize that. It's yeah. all connecting. And that's why I did all the summaries first and the past two weeks. Let you understand. Because if I didn't do that, 
when you're reading the Bible, it's the dots are not going to connect right away. And if I read the Bible first and the verse is not going to connect. But what, what Jesus is saying is that, listen, when you get into this period called the tribulation, even though Matthew 24 doesn't count years like Daniel, when you put our life together, he's saying, guess what? When you are going through the tribulation period, at mid-tribulation, when you see the Antichrist desecrating the temple, he says, watch out. The worst is yet to come. And notice the warnings, he says. Those of you who are in Judea, because it is going, he's talking to his people there. It doesn't mean that the tribulation is not going to affect the whole world. But this abomination of desolation is directed to, to Judea. All right? And so he says, watch out. You're not going to get, because the Antichrist is going to reveal him's true colors. And Jerusalem and Judea, it's going to be tough for you. Which is why we said that they are going to flee. So, back to the slide. Next slide, Pastor Evans. So, I'm going to read this over and then go into the next slide, Pastor Evans. So, what Antiochus did certainly qualifies as an, as an abomination. But it was not a complete fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy. Antiochus Epiphanes did not enter a covenant with Israel for seven years. And in Matthew 24, Jesus speaking some 200 years after Antiochus' evil actions spoke of Daniel's prophecy as having a still future fulfillment. Next slide. We take the futurist view, which sees the abomination of desolation prophecy as still future. In our view, Jesus was referring to the Antichrist who in the end times will establish a covenant with Israel for seven years and then break it by doing something similar to what Antiochus Epiphanes did in the temple. We should also recognize that the breaking of the covenant with Israel and the abomination of desolation will herald the beginning of the worst three and a half years in history, meaning the last half of the tribulation. Is that making sense to you all so far? We're putting it together and we're connecting to that. Can I make a confession now? Brother Mark, Pastor Mark, Sister Christine, and anybody else who's Bible college trained, we would have gone through this in Bible college, you know. But I tell you the truth, is when I study it out for myself now, for teach, you know, this Antiochus Epiphanes thing making sense to me. At first, no matter how them teach me, I never understood it. And I didn't understand why this was being brought up. But I'm bringing it up to you for you to understand that there are people out there who think that the abomination of desolation has gone. And there are times when I believe that because I never understand the thing. <laughs> but then when I started to study it, I realized it has not gone. This Antiochus leader just simply did something that was similar to it. And you may, as I said, you're right to even say that. Jeru That's why, let me, let me bring back this statement. Let me bring back this statement. This statement. The, the abomination, the, the abomination of desolation appears throughout history and in the age to come. I hope now you understand what I meant by that. The abomination of desolation appears throughout history and in the age to come. In other words, there, for instance, even after the death of Christ, when the temple was destroyed and Jerusalem was destroyed, people could also say that's a kind of abomination because destroying God's temple, destroying his holy city, that's an abomination. Am I making sense? So, the abomination of desolation, in other words, Israel has been desolated a few times so far. Am I making sense? They have been desolated a few times in history so far. When it was said in Daniel, it was future. But now, some abominations have happened to Israel. We must not therefore think, however... That because these abominations have happened to Israel 167 BC and 70 AD, that the abomination of desolation has gone. Because remember, none of these people who destroyed or desecrated the temple or the holy city 
have made a covenant with Israel before doing so. They were just on a rampage to desecrate and to destroy. Any questions, comments so far? What time is it? All right. Good so far. All right. So, I'm going to end with, with this. We will look at the other verses um, next time we meet. So, therefore, having said all of that, what is the abomination of desolation by the Antichrist? Because we looked at what an abomination of desolation is in general. So what is the abomination of desolation by the Antichrist? It is the image of the beast which will be set up in the temple of Jerusalem. An idol is bad enough, but setting it up in the temple is the height of all blasphemy. Right? Since Satan could not command worship in heaven, he will go to the next best place, the Jewish temple in the holy city, and promote the Antichrist as the one to worship instead of Jesus the Christ. That's what the abomination of desolation will be. Right? He, the Antichrist, is going to set himself up in God's temple, in God's face, and set up an idol. You know how much God hates idolism, right? Idolatry. Is the proper word you know how much he hates that and so that's going to be like the ultimate smack in the face to god according to the antichrist but that's why god is going to let him do his thing because this prophecy has to come through and then the bible says in daniel 9 27 that he's going to destroy him I'm going to take care of him but that is going to happen first all right next slide the antichrist will desecrate the temple and abolish the daily sacrifice i don't know again remember we have different kind of sacrifices or offerings we're not saying it it must be animal sacrifice they have they offer food they they, they offer money all kind of stuff as a sacrifice even when i was looking at the the jewish um you know literature they said they offer themselves as a living sacrifice so they're not they're not offering right now as it stands um animal sacrifice but who knows what the antichrist will do mr prout because this desolation and desecration is not detailed so what i've said to you could just be as far as i am concerned a tip at the surface because he may very well do much more much more again like what antiochus did he, he could very well do some similar things too. All right? And he could very well institute animal sacrifice. And even, do the, even repeat what Antiochus did. I bring in pig and all them things there. In other words, anything that is anti-God, the, the, the anti-Christ will do. Yes, Mr. Proud. You just said it, Father. That's what I was just going to say. Because when you look at it, circumcision, Jewish people. And, and you know the and if it is the pigs jews don't do that. Everything, everything that was jewish he'll want to to do the opposite yeah so they've abandoned um the sacrifice of animals because jesus christ paid the ultimate sacrifice no they'll want to reinstate that to to totally disregard christ's death burial and resurrection for mankind yep yep so the antichrist will desecrate the temple and abolish the daily sacrifice in other words not only will he defile the temple but he will also force the jews to stop their daily religious rituals rituals traditions ceremonials anything that the jews continue to do today and that they have been doing for years without fail observing their feasts and observing the look think of all the stuff that the jews continue to do today the observances the antichrist is going to put a stop to it it's interesting and one verse we're going to be reading we're not going to read it tonight because i know you're probably overwhelmed with so much information we will look at daniel 11 12 and, and we looked at matthew already but we look at the other daniel passages and um, when we return another day but one verse is going to say in in one of the daniel passages that it's going to be met with opposition nevertheless in other words 
They, not everybody is going to just stand and take it. They won't be able to match the Antichrist, but they are not going to just stand and take it. They are going to, they are go, they're going to fight him, but they're not going to win. In fact, they're going to have to flee after a while. But he is going to cramp the Jews' style. And so, that's the abomination of desolation. So we'll stop it there for tonight. Any quest, more questions, comments before we stop? Yes, Sister Suzette, you have a mic nearby? Sir, my own little confusing part. <clears throat> yes. Well, it might be more than a little, but um, verse 26. That last slide that we had, I wanted to read, but it's gone. Um, it says, how do you match? And just like explain it to me. How do you match when it says the people of the prince? And then you call the people of the prince the Antichrist. How do you work that out? Who verse call 26. him that? Not me. The pro verse 26 says, I'm just trying to understand, sir. Um, yeah. So, can anybody tell, tell, tell Suzette what I said? I think the prince is. Who I said the pr I think the prince is? Satan. 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 So, the people of, the, uh, of Satan. Yeah. That's what. That I, people have given different reasons or different, uh, not reasons the word I'm looking for, different opinions as to what they think, who they think the prince is. When I look at it, the, the prince seems to be the prince of the power of the, the air which is Satan, seems to be the one who is giving the source to evil. That's why I think it is Satan. I don't think the prince is the Antichrist. Am I making sense? And that makes sense to you now as well? Or you still have more? Feel free to ask, man. What else? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a lot to process to, you know. And, and let me just say this from now to anybody if you want me to simply pluck the, these out and send it to you and you read it over because it's a lot to process and trust me after a while i was saying my word this thing is deep and connecting the dots doesn't always come right away for everybody but it's interesting stuff and once we connect though it will all make sense all right any more questions comments all right so let's stop it pause it right there we're gonna just dismiss this segment in prayer and then get into our time of prayer for requests so father we thank you for your word and there's so much here so much to learn know and god we pray dear god that you will give us again an extra extra anointing of wisdom interestingly you gave you gave the vision to daniel and the words you use you allowed the angel to use was daniel i'm going to give you some wisdom and some understanding in other words it's not going to be easy if daniel was because if people just read the bible they'll realize that after daniel received the dreams the visions it said that he was at one point perplexed he didn't understand it another time he's almost like fainting like lord this is too overwhelming so if daniel was overwhelmed imagine us but indeed we are so glad we have your entire bible now that we can slowly put it together slowly connect the dots so we ask for extra wisdom you know extra anointing in order to get this done and even on me especially being the main teacher in all of this we do need your total wisdom in looking at these things because there are some things that are really clear and specific in the years and so forth and so we now know why people have been specific about seven years and three and a half years because your bible says so so bless it to our hearts and our heads in jesus name i pray amen